Welcome to the Manufacturing Masters Podcast with your host, Allison DeFord. Everybody, we have a real treat for you today. A Canadian, a president and founder, and an industrial safety expert. Nelson Bryson is joining me to talk about decluttering and safety and we get into some really interesting things that I know you're not going to want to miss. This is a great episode. He is not only the president and founder of CSS, which is Contingency Safety Solutions, he is also an expert on the Manufacturing Masters platform. And I learned a lot from this man. His videos are excellent on the platform, and he's got a lot of wisdom and just really sensible things that he sees some manufacturers overlooking. So I know you're going to get a kick out of this. Let's dive in. Everybody, here we grow. Hey, Nelson, I'm so happy that you're with us today on the Manufacturing Masters podcast. How are you? I'm good, Nelson. How are you? Good. Just chilling up in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Well, it is chilly. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. It's, uh, <laughs> they said it's spring started a couple of days ago, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Have yet to see that? <laughs> yeah, not, not completely. It's warmer than it was. Oh, well, you know, one thing that I'm not sure if everybody knows about you, besides the fact that you are an expert on this platform, um, I feel like safety is your middle name. And one of my favorite things, I've learned a lot from watching your videos on the platform myself. And one of my favorite things that you talk about is returning your people home safely to their families at the end of the day. Like that, that just jumped out at me because do you feel like we take safety for granted or feel like it's just the OSHA thing or it's, uh, it's the nagging thing we've got to do. And do you think sometimes we forget that's the important part, right? is sending all your people home at the end of the day safely. Um, all of the above in, in some part, I guess. Um, to, I don't know if that's the, the, the most clear answer, but it is the most important thing. Um, nobody goes to work uh, in the morning, uh, you know, it says goodbye to whoever or, you know, uh, kisses their spouse or, you know, takes their kids to school and doesn't expect to come home or doesn't expect a parent to come home or a son or a daughter to come home. And I don't think intentionally anybody, uh, you know, sets out uh, as a business to be neglectful that way. But, uh, yeah, some, but there is some of that too. Unfortunately, they will put people out in dangerous situations, and uh, you know sometimes it's all about the the bottom line and getting a job done. And safety can be overlooked, and occasionally is. I think it's improving a lot um, That's good. in my experience. Uh, I see uh, most companies uh, either are trying to practice some safety and. Uh, can be a little misguided or concentrating sometimes on the wrong things. Uh, sometimes people are focusing on potentially big, uh, big accidents and, 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 uh, are getting the small stuff fatalities. And yeah, they kind of overlook all the little things that prevent that on the way through. And, and, um, that's a little bit about culture and a little bit about, uh, slowing down and taking a minute uh, up front. And once you get it done uh, in the initial, it becomes, as a lot of people refer to this in a, in, in, in a lot of ways, but it really becomes culture. Mm -hmm. and habit, right? Just yeah, be, habit. It's, it's part of what you do every day. It really is. That, that's that's, that's a, a, a great analogy. And things you do every day and things you practice every day. And when a new person comes into the work site, they look at the other people and they mimic them. And Yes, true. They do. And people who aren't with your company that uh, come onto your work site or into your workplace or even into your office, 
um, if they see disarray, if they see things uh, out of place or see things that they can trip over or piles of junk in this corner, and it just gives people an overall impression of maybe somebody's not paying attention. And if you're not paying attention there, where else are you paying attention? And exactly. when the employees feel that way and see that, um, it does permeate down and it permeates upward. It, it comes from the hiring process as well. Mm -hmm. It's hiring people and putting those expectations in place. Well, one of the, I think, most important things you talk about, one of the things, because there are many, is the, the idea of decluttering. Mm -hmm. And you say a clean factory equals a safe factory. And you talk about in, in one of your videos that clutter is actually the, a major cause of injury. So I was curious, what are some of the things that you see people, you said a lot of times they might focus on the big things. What mm -hmm. are some of the little things that may get overlooked that would aid in decluttering and preventing injury? Well, Allison, it's, it's like you mentioned, it's it's good habits and good practices. And it's about making sure uh, your tools are put away properly so they can be accessed by the next person uh, and the correct tool is used. Um, you're not using the wrong tool that uh, may uh, be more dangerous or, you know, in an electrical sense, may get you electrocuted or uh, may not tighten the bolt that you need to tighten properly. Um, making sure that there's not dangerous things laying around that can cause harm. Uh, you don't want to have uh, sharp tools laying out where people can walk by and cut themselves or uh, pointy things. Uh, cleaning up garbage and messes immediately. Making sure there's not uh, slippery spots on the floor. Um, maybe not cords what, where people walk. Uh, making sure that things, uh, electrical cords aren't laying in water or are frayed somewhere. And as I've mentioned in, in uh, one of my videos on this, um, that all becomes a little gray to the people who are there all the time if it's not dealt with on a regular basis. And they tend to forget it or see it or learn to deal with it. And... Um, I worked in, in a, an operation once where you came down the stairs, you slid across the grease, you slammed into the wall, and you made a 90-degree right turn. That's what you did every day. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and, <laughs> I'm and, picturing that. Well, and everybody did it, right? So it was acceptable. You know, the manager watched it and thought it was funny every time. And Oh, my gosh. It never changed. But if somebody had have slipped the wrong way, there was such a big chance for 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 incredible injury, right? Like, but well, that's the way well, it you, was, and and I see that on on job sites even today. Really, and, well, and I was going to ask. I've got a couple questions. One, do you feel like, bottom line, that this could be prevented with better training in the beginning? That training is part of the culture. Is that question. a solution? Yes. Should be part of the, the, uh, the uh, again, back right to hiring, um, that uh, these are standards. These are practices. They're meant to be upheld. Um, it's about training and coaching, but it's also about discipline. And if it's not being yes. followed, um, if, if you want something to run poorly, then, uh, you know, put up with a bad employee for a while and watch how the other employees react. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a great way to ruin a good shop or, you know, a, a, a good work site. And, and yes, it, it has to start uh, initially with training, but it has to be followed through at every level of, of the operation. And it has to be uh, a corporate uh, mindset. It has to be the boss. It has to be the, uh, the administrators. It has to be the people that uh, are doing the, you know, the purchasing and the receiving and, yeah, it takes everybody. And I, I I found it interesting when I was watching your videos. I say this about marketing, which is a completely different subject, but important for the business as well. It starts from the inside out and the top down. 
And I feel like you say the same thing about safety, which I loved. Well, because it plays into it plays into my arcade. Yeah, true. If you, if you don't believe that everybody else sees that from the outside looking in, that's where the gray goes missing. Right. Outsiders don't see that gray that the other people see every day and just becomes part of the practice and the old wells and we'll get to it next week and put that over there and you know all that stuff that uh, and and everybody sees that stuff in work, workplaces all the time. Mm -hmm. um and when you know a new client walks in or a supplier walks in or you know one of the trades people walks in to do your electrical or your plumbing um you know somebody comes in to pick up an order they see it quickly because that's the first thing they notice it's out of place it's not normal and it gives an overall image of your business well if this is if this is how the they look is that how they care about my my project right Right. Is that how they're is 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 you know is that how they're measuring my precision equipment that I'm thinking about buying, <laughs> and right. I don't want to buy a lot of them. Um, and again, when you uh, when you walk onto a site and it's not a safe site, everybody notices that. And True. if there's people acting like cowboys, it's immediately a topic of conversation when you're offsite. Attention to detail was noticed. Yes. Well, and and on that note, another thing that you talk about that I I think is brilliant is that you say big events uh, are an accumulation of small actions. Yeah. Like I liken that to the compound effect. It's exactly what it is. Those like small you're, you're right on the money. Right. Small habits every day lead to big results hopefully positive and safe versus the alternative. If you're not cleaning up, if you're not straightening up, if you're not putting things back where they belong, so the person that comes in after you knows exactly what is in front of them, where their tools are, that their tools are in good shape because the person who put them away inspected them. The person that takes them out is going to do a visual inspection of them, and that includes your harnesses, your safety gear, um, anything else that you have to put on uh, at the shop so somebody's not going up uh, to hike uh, with, with frayed gear. And if they do need to gear, uh, God forbid that it fails them. Um, that's a worst case scenario. Um, you're also, as you're putting things away, especially equipment and machinery, you're inspecting it, you're noticing if there's a, a leak or if you smell something burning, a rubber belt or something, um, you know, and you can bring that up to maintenance or operations. Uh, the next person out in the morning, uh, normally good companies have inspections uh, on equipment every day anyway, and should, and that's a big part of safety. Right. Um, fits right in with the, you know, the day-to-day -day decluttering, organizational, observational. And, you know, as you organize and clean up uh, at night, organize and make sure everything is ready and checked in the mornings and a little bit of housekeeping during the, uh, you know, the, the work day to make sure you're, you're not, again, building up opportunity for little disasters and little problems to turn into big problems. You solve a lot of, you solve a lot of issues before they ever happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I liken it to planning and, and I'll tell you what I mean. Um, I have a mastermind group that I meet with every week, been doing it for the last 10 years. And about six years ago, one of the other agency owners and a dear friend of mine now, she said she was talking about blocking our time every day and planning your week on Sunday. And as a mom at the time of two younger daughters and owning a business. And, and I just, all I could think of was that sounds monotonous and boring and it take would take away all my freedom and 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 i'll explain why i just thought of that i think the same thing can happen in an organization when you look at those daily housekeeping right uh strategically looking at things each month each week and every day before you start the shift, when you end the shift, that respect and caring, it actually is the opposite. It creates the freedom, right? 
that was a mm-hmm. that was a brick to my head when I finally yeah. figured it out in my own life. And I'm literally when I'm watching your videos and talking with you, I just had the same parallel. It's an exact parallel. Yeah. Without question, it is. You're more organized. Uh, you without question will have less downtime. Yes. Um, you won't be taking the whole crew uh, every two, three weeks, a month to do a massive cleanup and hence inventory things and do inspections on everything. Um, if you're a company uh, size where you have to have a safety committee or you know 20 people or more in Canada, uh, well, you should have a safety person on site. Most most companies are pretty good with it now, even below that. But you have to have a committee at that point. It makes the committee's job much easier. It allows them to go to management and get the things uh, uh, that the staff need and want to, to work safely. And if the staff, and again, that's where I often mention it takes the bottom too. It takes the people, um, you know, we're not hiring children, we're hire, hiring adults. And that culture needs to be instilled uh, through supervisory levels uh, and just the everyday responsible worker that this is how we do this here. And, uh, you know, we work responsibly, we have a clean workplace. And when you do that, it again you you allow your uh, your management to uh, to go to battle for you as as employees to get things that you want. Mm-hmm. Like usually you're working with better equipment. Um, there's no surprises usually, right. uh, and if they are, you're either minor or you're prepared for them, or or the uh, disaster is marginalized or minimized. And again. Uh, goes back to where you say about your marketing. Um, that's live marketing. Everybody sees that. Mm-hmm. Because marketing, when you boil it down to its its essence, it's my belief that it's your promise. Yeah. Right. The uh, message so- that you put out, the vehicle that you use, those are just tools. Mm-hmm. But your essence, your promise. That's that's what you're marketing. That's what you're made of. Well, if I go to a restaurant and I see a sign about how great the food is and it looks wonderful outside and I walk in and they have nice decorations and then I go to the bathroom and everything is dirty. Oh, exactly. Yeah. It's like, uh, it, just, it blows it's everything. Exactly the same thing in business. Yeah. You know, your, your work site is people are going into your bathroom to look mm-hmm. right? and people even come without about a workplace. Keep your bathroom squeaky. Right? Like you go, like peeking in someone's medicine cabinet. Not that I've ever done that. Nobody has. No, but you're right. You're right. It is. <laughs> it's every little, um, every little detail. And I think in preparation, that's the one thing. So you create these habits and you also prepare, right? You plan for the best, but you prepare for the worst. And if, if whoever's listening to this, the millions of people listening to this, I want to make sure that you catch Nelson's video of the ambulance just left. What do we do now? It's brilliant. It's so specific. And it's something that you, if you don't prepare for that, you go into panic mode and all kinds of mayhem can ensue. And so we don't need to necessarily get into that whole video right now because we, we need no. to start wrapping up. But it's it's that kind of preparedness. Don't you think that all of these good habits and safety measures lead to? Well, I, it's true. I was prepared for that by an incident right in front of where I recorded that video. Um, it happened to us. Uh, and there was fallout and there was panic and there was all of those things. So, uh, it's where I started really taking safety very serious and, and going into the safety <clears throat> side of, uh, of business from, from an incident like that. Uh, and it was a, it was a small detail ignored that allowed it all to happen. Wow. A housekeeping detail. It really was. Well, hopefully um, everybody listening, whether or not they are in charge of a machine or tools, if you are in HR or you're in accounting 
or you're in marketing. Don't miss out on Nelson safety videos because you will learn a lot. And that's the cool thing I love about this platform is that each video is so short and to the point, and there's something to take away for anybody that's listening. So I want to thank you for what you do because we need this message. We need this training and we need to help our people go home to their families at night safely. And before we wrap up, I want to ask you one final question because I think we can all learn from each other. What is one thing that you want to learn this year? Oh boy. I There's know it's words. it's a big one. What do I want to learn this year? Mm -hmm. Um geez, I guess I'll just probably more and become a little more well-rounded in the business that I work in now and uh, the businesses that uh, that work with me. But really, you know, the mushy answer is, you know, learn more about the people that I work with. Oh, I love that. Yeah. If you, I haven't if you gotten that answer ever. That's really well, great. Kind of, if, if you understand the people that you work with, it's easier to you know, to have uh, influence or, or to be influenced as well, right? Absolutely. Mm. I love that. As my therapist would say, let's hold on to that. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I don't like that. My, my therapist has been around for 37 <laughs> years, God bless her. <laughs> well, it's true. So you listening, hold on to that, take that with you. And maybe that's something you want to learn this year too. Nelson, thank you so much for being on the podcast. And I cannot wait to continue learning from you as uh, as you create more videos and share your expertise with the manufacturing world. Well, you're welcome. And uh, ditto back to you, Allison. The same, I, I look forward to learning more from you. And thank you. This has been a wonderful experience. I appreciate it. All right. Until next time. Talk soon. Thank you. If you're not already, subscribe to the Manufacturing Masters podcast on Apple Music or Spotify. And for a deeper dive, head on over to manufacturing-masters.com. It's everything they never taught you in school.